Hello. Today, I will not be creating art. I'll be showing you my old art. A lot of loose pages, a lot of school lined notebooks. I guess technically were my sketchbooks before, but before I even thought that I was worthy of having a sketchbook. But there'll be more in that story when I actually do my first number one sketchbook tour. And I'll try to go chronologically, but we'll see how it goes. Let's see what we can see. Hopefully all of this or most of it will be from primary school. This is primary school. <laughs> I wonder if my hands have grown at all since then. This was hanging on the bathroom door of our classroom for a long time. We had to write our names. I wanted to be sneaky and uh, subtle. So you've got, see if you can, first of all, guess, maybe pause the video, guess where the letters of my name are. It's M, E, G, A, N. Um, I think I did these at my nanny's house. Like, obviously this is all under the age of 12, all of this, because once I was 12, I started using sketchbooks and I can keep a better track of when stuff was done after the age of 12. This is why I didn't do acrylic paint for ages, because I just didn't like it. <laughs> How there was like, I, everything was really bulky. I couldn't control it properly. This is another school thing. They'd like, they gave you something to color in and then you had to come up with your own. And I remember so proud of that thinking, wow, I got it so symmetrical and it's a cool design. I did a lot of experimentation. Nuravime Colleen Ogue. That's a bit of Irish. I went to an all Irish school. <laughs> but my friend must have the other ones of it. Uh, the phase where I do all these upside down pictures. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but we had a, got a book from the library one time. And so, like, this is a nurse this way up. I turn it around, and it's a guy in a funny little hat. And this is a queen. Or a, a very disturbed looking knight. This is a bald guy or a robber, a king, or a jester, a guy with an extreme underbite, or a guy with a red nose. He looks a bit like a, a like a old-timey pilot. And that's love. Thing where I wasn't very good at collage, and I'm still not very good at collage, but sometimes I'd give it a, give it a go and be like, come on, Megan, just be like free and don't worry about how it looks. And this kind of stuff would mostly done in my nanny's house because she'd always have loads of pattern paper and stuff. And there wouldn't be many good drawing supplies at my nanny's house, so I'd have to use what I had available. Their attempt at acrylic painting. Nice indoor scene before I understood what perspective was. Though, I've only just learnt what perspective is. Oh, I must have seen this on like YouTube or something, this bubble blowing art. And so I decided to do an art session with my sister. This was my first attempt at oil paint. Because my grand had got us this huge box of different paints and for ages I didn't want to use any of them. I was, I was like, this is big girl paint, so I can't use these. And there was a section full of it. Like, you know, one of these variety sets from my attempt at the oils? I think it was partly because the paper is so holy and I thought that I just can't do this. There must be some other thing you need to add to it. And obviously you do add stuff to oil paints, but later on I found out just recently that you can paint without using any mediums or solvents, but you need a slightly smoother paper than this and a bit more patience at like layering. So impatient Megan. I was not happy with that. I was trying to go for like a beach scene with a cliff or something, but because of this, it made me not want to try oils for a long time. But now I have, and uh, really, they're a lot of fun. So they take so long to uh, clean up. I don't experiment with them much. It's like drawing twins with slight differences. That was something I was into then. I was so happy with this one. I did. I thought that is a most beautiful piece of abstract art, and all these little dots. They must have taken ages to do. Ah, you'll see a lot of this. Ollie, Tim and Lily. A lot of love. I got a comic book from the library. Well, a book about making comics. And this was my one attempt at learning and then I gave up. I think this is from like a random prompts website. Something I loved doing when I was younger was just drawing outfits. Sometimes you'd add people, but the outfits were the thing. I never sketched when I was younger. Just went straight in with the pens and it was just purely what was in my head coming on the paper. You'd have to fix mistakes, just incorporate it if there were any, because there's no rubbing out water-based marker. <laughs> I wish I could have the guts to do that now. Did they ever make you do pointillism in primary school with like a cotton wool bud? It was one of the most frustrating things when you're trying to do a figurative piece, but the abstract stuff was more fun. This is when I was watching some YouTubers who were constantly using tracing paper, and I was like, I should be sketching my stuff and then tracing it. Ah, more love and just writing. I do this thing where I try to like use every marker, and use the marker and then put it to the side. Oh, this must be one of the oldest pieces of my artwork that I have. I think it must be out of a school book because 
What's really happened, obviously the teacher corrected it. I did a redraw of this more recently, I have to show that. So, so obviously the, the fairy is in not great looking clothing and Cinderella's like, no, I don't want to dress like that. Oh, this is Ranga Tree, so 2012. So I was nine years old when I did the art in here. Oh, another hand tracing. I wonder if my hands have grown. Ah, yes, my hands have grown since third class. And my nails, well, my thumbnails get that long, but none of the others do. And never that square. Uh, one time the teacher brought us into one of the unoccupied classrooms and did this imagination thing where you had to imagine in your head like really strongly a pirate and like in every detail. I did and I drew it and I was like, wow, that looks exactly like she did in my head. She's going to the cinema. <laughs> that has a nice moss on the door. Obviously not strong in the backgrounds, prefer character design. That must have been for World Book Day. There's a worm going through the book. One of the things where you'd have to write your name out and then s describe yourself. What did I think of myself back in third class? So I was Alienta, Artie, here's a little Irish lesson for you. Sonna, Happy, Colleen, Girl, Topig, Fast. I don't think I could say that I'm that anymore. Island, oh lovely. Sosta, Happy. I'm not quite sure the distinction between those two words. I haven't practiced art in a while. And that's an English word. That's, I don't, I don't know what I was saying there. Klishta, clever. Albulta, able. Basic, polite. Uskulta, open. Makanta, honest. Das, nice. Shasunta, it's like steadfast, I think. Og, young. Kaurok, helpful. And. I. I. Idoch? Taidoch? Something to do with research. I'm not sure. I'll have to look up those words later. Oh, a project we have to do on our Mamo. On our, uh, Mamo is nanny in Irish. I did a little illustration of a milk, uh, milk shop, sweet shop. I'm sure you had to do that in primary school or something. This was quite, I, I loved this so much when I did it. I thought, oh wow, there's so much going on, so much detail like in a Where's Wally book. The idea was that you had to do like finger prints and then you had to turn them into characters. He's obviously just fallen off. He's falling. Man, this couple is like, oh my goodness. I'm probably going through this way too slowly. I'll probably only get through one like folder in this video. Hopefully you're being amused. Megan the Minion. You got to choose like a minion to colour in and then they put it on the classroom door. Uh, this is what I was saying about pointillism. I was so frustrated and I didn't end up point doing pointillism. The kids in my class were like, we can like cheat by just like rubbing it around, but we're still not using a paintbrush. <laughs> so we're defeating the point. But, you know, get a bunch of nine-year-olds to do pointers, and who's got the patience for that? I probably wouldn't have the patience now, especially with, like, a cotton wool bud. Here's a sheep and her lamb. Acrylic painting in primary school was so frustrating. They give us, you the massive, the massivest, the hugest brushes. And this one, actually, the teacher, the teacher said, you're not allowed to mix colours, you have to only use the primary colours. And I was thinking, but these are the colours you mix to make other ones. Teachers try to, like, build you up slowly, but... If you've been doing art since you were like age, I don't know, when can you pick up a paintbrush? This was the dog I wanted for most of my primary school life. And Jessie, who is nine months old. Nine months, because I'm nine years, that was my logic. My eyes are brown, my fur is white and brown. I like biscuits and being rubbed. Sparky, Wiz, Booper and Lulu are my friends. I'm a King, oh, King Charles Spaniel. I'm good at doing tricks. My owner says that I am the best dog in the world. More frustration at the thick paintbrushes. There's a dog. Someone's doing a handstand in the ocean. That would be freezing. I would not do that in the ocean. In the pool, maybe. Lying on, lying on his back. Oh, what's going on with this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's Mrs. Princess. Also, they gave you a head. And this one had piggy tails on it. And immediately I was like, ah. This is not my my vision. So I chopped off the piggy tails and added a bun to her. And then we had to just draw the body ourselves. You cannot see that whole thing in one shot. Do you want the English translation? And they'd give you questions and then you'd have to write, do a write upon yourself. So when I was nine, my name was Megan. I, was, uh, I am nine years old. I'm a girl. <sighs> and my eyes are blue. My hair is blonde. I like potatoes and chocolate. My friends are Bo and Ben. 
I like Mr. Maker and Artzuka. They'd ask you, like, what's your favourite TV show? We never had a TV, so I just wrote the only art shows I'd ever watched on my nanny's TV. I like golf and tennis. I've never been a big sporting person, so I just wrote the two that I thought I liked the best. <laughs> I like reading. I do not have a pet. Moving on. This was a start, the start of an era. I've done so many redraws of this. You can see them all on my Instagram. This is back in the time where I did not sketch. Um, no sketching, just go with it. I was so happy with her nose. I thought it looked really realistic and subtle. <laughs> Trying to do some interior design. That's also on my Instagram. I did a redraw of that with my current understanding of perspective now, which I didn't have then. I also love to draw just people in a row. More people in a row. More beautiful interior design. <laughs> Best friends, don't follow me, I'm lost. Here's a dance. So we've got these people dancing and in like more fancy clothes. And they're they're whispering look they're whispering about her like, oh look what she's come dressed in. <laughs> and there's another picture of the backs of them walking down the hall. Here is the people who walked up the hallway. So these these ones are swimming. I'd always like to have scenes where there's like mothers and daughters and you could like try to match the mothers to the daughters. I can't tell now. <laughs> an attempt at a realistic portrait. How far we've come. This was quite an emotional scene. A party or a meetup or something and then these people have come and that's her daughter and that's the mom and she's like running to greet the friends and I think that's her mom. No, yeah that's her mom. That's her mom, that's her mom. Oh, I think they're sisters or something. And like, she hasn't seen her in years and she's got really short dinosaur arms. That must be her cousin then, if that's her daughter. And she, they might never have seen each other. You know, this is the kind of stories that go on. I do not have such good stories or like characters in my heart anymore. Here's one of the families that I love to create. These are the Dawns, therefore all their names have to begin with D. Derek, age 41. D Diana, age 43. Daniela, age 16. I always see the teenagers like really, I don't know, <laughs> what I thought teenagers were, like age 10 or 11. Debbie, age 13. Dandelion and Daffodil, they're 11. They're twins, if you couldn't tell. She's the tidy one, she's the messy one. Daisy, age eight, she loves cats. Dan, Dave and Dale, all age four. Dick, age two. Dory, age uh, nine months. And Darren, nine months. They must be twins too. And Dora, six weeks. See, I try to do the whole nine month thing, but technically it would be pretty hard for those three pe those people to exist at the same time. That got pointed out to me when I was younger. I was like, I don't care, it's a draw. Here's Maya and Naya. The twins, they've got twin birds, Nora and Dora, and twin dogs, Arena and Tina. I've done a redraw of them too, with a background when I start using watercolour. We'll see that at some point in the future. <laughs> I think when that was probably when I was watching Nicholas Pet Shop a lot, and you know the twins in there, how they have slight colour differences? I always thought that look was really cool, so. I'll try it out. Ah, I haven't done this in a long time. Draw this in my style challenge. So this was my style back then, apparently. Just the way I drew things naturally. This is my realistic style, and I'm trying to draw realistically. Flappy Bird, Power Puffs. I hadn't watched half of these shows, I just, they were styles I could do stuff in. A Little Miss, a Lego figure, The Far Side. We had this far, we have this Far Side book, and I just love the way the characters look, so I had to do one of them. Sarah and Duck, Minnie Mouse, and my style, Cute Eyes. So I've three, had three different styles going back in the day. Oh, an old couple looking at a photo album. I should do a redraw of this, that'd be cool. I told you Ollie, Tim and Lily would show up again. Apparently they've also got two other friends. I did name them and another friend, but I've forgotten their names now. Yeah, that's Tim. No way to know what their names are. I think I remember that the purple dog is called Douglas. This is when I was tracing. All of these are the same two people that I traced, but then just coloured them and added their features differently. So this is representing my parents. I think I was sort of inspired by my aunt and uncle, possibly. This was my greatest achievement of all time. At the time, I was like, wow, this is a new level of realism, Megan. Well done. I've always struggled with side profiles, so. But the idea of that was they're imagining each other, that they're together, and like he's imagining that he's kissing her and she's imagining the feeling on her lips. 
written on the back of a carcadilacon note. Always use scrap paper, especially when you're younger, because otherwise it's a waste of paper. I was like on that high, this is realism, and then my confidence came crashing down. Not really, I kept drawing. Another lineup, we've got Jolie, Tamara, Lil and Tara. Not real people, not even inspired by real people. So I want to do something sort of edgy, abstract, surreal. Guess in the comments what this is inspired by. If you've made it this far into the video, well done. <laughs> it's way longer than anything I've done so far, but hopefully you're being entertained and my ramblings aren't annoying you. Oh, this was actually a really good caricature representation. People could guess who the different people are. It's my mom and her friends. Rachel, Rebecca, Tamika, Jillian, and Loretta. I named her because she reminded me of my friend's mom who's called Loretta. Sorry, Loretta, if you're watching this, but uh, it's probably like the Bob. I don't know. Poppy, Izzy, Hannah, and Jessica. Again, I think I drew that. And then I thought, oh, that looks like my friend Jessica. I'll call her Jessica. <laughs> oh my goodness. When I had the box of, a box of crayons, I'd never use them. I'd always feel bad. So I sorted all my crayons, random assortment of crayons, into colour order. Then we had to put them away again. Remember the thing from third class with the fingerprints? Here. So this is my aunt and uncle and my cousins. This is probably my family. This is probably my younger sister and my mom and my dad and me. With my side plait. Before, now my sister is like that height. And I'm definitely a little bit taller than my mom. <laughs> but we're not taller than our dad. So he should be like that tall. Ooh, another style challenge. And as I was saying earlier, I love drawing pages and pages of outfits. And I'd, then I'd go around asking my friends, you tell me which one you, which outfit you want. And I'd write their name beside it. So obviously that was my favorite. It'd be really cool if I like, I put a picture on my Instagram of one of these or like did a poll or something. And everyone like did that and selected their favorite ones. T do you have any like suggestions for how I could bring this back in some way because it was sort of cool I, I don't know anyone else who just who used to do this when they were a kid tell me if you used to do this just draw loads of outfits um, oh yeah this is what that other pointillism one was inspired by um this actually has a deeper meaning when i did this i think this should be in the third class or fourth class folder my cousins had just left and moved to another country and i was feeling really sad so this is representing the world and like, I love you even though you're not with me. And this doesn't look anything like an actual global. Oh yeah, this is sort of the sentiment. This came, it actually came through my art a lot how I was feeling when my cousins left. I will always love you even though you're far away. This. But this must have been when we redid our kitchen and mom did a colour scheme of green and pink. So I was like, I'm going to make you some wall art for the kitchen, like abstract. She never hung it up. Here was the tombstone eye phase. I went through that. You'll see that in some of the like little sketchbook things. Again, we're trying to go wild, do a collage. I don't do work that expressive anymore. My younger cousin always draws. Well, I think he's branched out a little bit more in his artistic endeavors now, but he'd always draw like a, a yellow house, black roof. So I tried doing one in perspective because I was able to draw boxes, but it's... I n I've now discovered two point perspective and that is really, even one point perspective, I didn't know that then. Oh, this is the result of one of my art sort outs because if I kept every piece of artwork I'd ever created, well, no, I just can't, mom throws it out. At least when I was younger, she always throw stuff out. So I, instead of that, having her throw everything out, I decided to go through all my art myself and just keep the stuff that I like the best and glue it all together. So you can see some of this stuff. I think I was pretty proud of that. More realistic. And I think there's another side. Some first attempts at watercolour, I guess. A scary looking snake with a scar. And more families. Must have been inspired by Starry Night. Ooh, some fancy people. It'd be really interesting to try to redraw them, but as realistic, more realistic looking people. Oh, there's a family portrait. Back when me and Haley were short. And that was the first folder. It's through, and 
I don't know if I should carry on with this because it's probably really long already. We'll see. We did see and I saw that even after editing it down loads and chopping loads out, it was still like 20 minutes long. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and there'll be more old art sketchbook tours in the future. Bye!